Uh, dear colleagues, um, in this short introduction lecture I would like to give you information about the education for corticobasal implantology as uh, it is available today and delivered by the International Implant Foundation uh, from Munich. Corticobasal implantology is a discipline, of course, inside dentistry, um, but um, you can, while well, you can take courses for endodontics or courses for creating veneers and so on, you can do these courses within two, three days over a weekend. You get enough information uh, to, to do these small details uh, for your patients. In corticobasal implantology, uh, unfortunately, it is necessary to learn a new dentistry. So most of the things which we have learned during our university education is not applicable for this technology. That's why we have to uh, learn it new. Um, the learning is not possible on a weekend course or on two weekend courses. On, on weekend courses you will get an overview of what is happening, what is being done there, and you can decide for yourself you want to do this or you don't want to do this. But after you decide that you want to do this, you really have to go uh, uh, to, to the curriculum or to, to bigger events, to large events, events which take a year, to get the necessary knowledge. So it is not possible to just read a little bit in the book, two or three articles and come to two courses and then to do it, because there are too many things done differently compared to conventional implantology, also compared to, den to dentistry, traditional dentistry, especially dentistry on teeth. And uh, in order to fully understand the concept of corticobasal implantology, you need a lot of education. The International Implant Foundation provides this uh, education in many countries, actually around the world, and also in a number of languages. Uh, the education is based on courses. Courses give, um, as I said, the overview on the treatment possibilities. You see practical work, you can uh, discuss uh, treatment options, treatment plans and so on. The second step, or the, actually the real step to get this education, to get all the knowledge, is if you uh, participate in the curriculum. The curriculum is a structured education. It uh, contains full theoretical and practical education. The practical education will be done by supervisors in your clinic, typically. Uh, and at the end of the curriculum you will receive the authorization for the technology, which means you can purchase these implants and the parts and pieces which are used um, or necessary to do uh, this treatment. If you are interested to get a university diploma and to have this diploma hanging <laughs> in your waiting room, then it's possible to do this also. Uh, in the university diploma you get an education on international level and inside the university with the possibility of doing practical works on patients. So these are not your patients, but these are patients um, from the university. And um, many doctors like this option. They want to be able to practice on patients which are not on their own. And uh, if you feel that this is the best option for you to learn, then I recommend that you participate in the university diploma, which is offered also in a number of countries. At the end uh, of this diploma year, uh, you will have also, of course, the authorization for the procedure. The highest level of education, however, is the IF Masterclass for immediate loading. Uh, after several years of practical work and experience, your own experience, uh, you can try to pass this exam. This is a theoretical exam, not so easy theoretical exam, I have to say. And you have to present uh, your own cases uh, with, uh, and to show that these cases have been uh, done according to the methods of the IF and uh, that these cases have a history of a number of years. Also, you should uh, show failure cases and show uh, how these failures were, these problematic cases were solved by yourself. So the masterclass immediate loading is basically the highest uh, level of, of education, the highest uh, uh, level of testing. Many of the, of the participants of the university diploma and of, this master, of the masterclass then proceed to become an IF teacher. Um, the colleagues do this because they want to stay in close contact with the technology, you want to change, exchange ideas with other teachers on teacher meetings around the world, or there are Zoom meetings, there are personal meetings. And um, typically I would say the IF teachers are the ones 
which um, know most about the technology and who keep uh, themselves updated because also things are changing. I will come to this later. Things are changing, things are improving gradually over years. There are new developments um, happening in some countries and all this has to be compiled together. This is part of, part of the work of the International Implant Foundation to do this. So there are many good reasons to become an IF teacher and those um, doctors which have passed the university diploma and or the master class, many of them, we see them again on teacher meetings and they become teacher and they want to promote this technology, they want to show other doctors how it is done. The diploma as IF teacher is renewed every year in order to maintain it valid, so regular teaching is required and also the participating participation in uh, annual teacher courses. Um, the IF also um, gives education authorization for experts. Corticobasal implants differ considerably from conventional implants, which were used previously, and in some countries they are still used, of course. They are the two-phase or two-stage systems. And because they differ, uh, experience and knowledge from toothpaste implantology, which works according to the method named osseointegration, cannot be adopted. So we cannot work like uh, the traditional implantologist with the method of osseointegration. Our method is the, is the ossification and uh, therefore the fundamentally new training is necessary. Training for, for the doctors who perform, training also for the teacher and of course the expert needs the experience because without experience he wouldn't be an expert. Uh, there are rules, I mean recognized rules for corticobasal implantology and these rules are laid down in seven consensus documents. So the experts have to understand uh, these seven consensus documents. These documents are updated by the board, by the scientific board of the International Implant Foundation and uh, it reflects of course the current specialist literature means the literature on corticobasal implantology. So the, the literature on traditional implantology is not uh, important uh, for us. Uh, it's, a, it's a different field, although we work in the same oral cavity with the same patient. But uh, what, is, um, yeah, what is researched in traditional implantology doesn't apply uh, to us typically. Uh, the Impl International Implant Foundation issues a journal uh, of course, a lot of articles are found there and um, the members, mainly the teachers, board members, are regularly publishing on PubMed or Scopus journals. Now, I would like to mention a few of these consensus documents. Uh, these documents were issued by the boards of experts. Uh, for example, number one, consensus on treatment modalities with basal implants in connection with the maxillary sinus. Uh, this document um, it was necessary uh, in order to, I mean, to create this document, was necessary in order to uh, inform yeah, the colleagues, the otolaryngologists, about the possibilities, about uh, uh, how to treat in cases when uh, the maxillary sinus is affected or is infected, uh, actively infected, and how to assess whether uh, the implant could be the cause of the problem or not. So this consensus is quite important because um, in the upper jaw about 30%, 40% of the implants are uh, reaching the maxillary uh, sinus. The consensus on corticobasal implants, which was uh, for the first time issued in the year 1999 by the Implantoral Club uh, Germany, is presently valid in version 5.0 and it's issued in January 2021. Uh, this consensus describes the general treatment strategy uh, it uh, describes also the reasons for removal of implants and when implants should not be removed. It's very important to understand, to, 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 know, to know the border and, and how to treat. So this consensus document uh, gives uh, um, a clear guideline for the treatment. There's always a discussion if our implants can be also, also integrated and uh, the International Implant Foundation has issued consensus for, for dental implantology description of the ways to achieve osseointegration. Um, in this consensus we kind of raise also the question if osseointegration exists in the way as it is being taught uh, at the universities uh, and uh, what is the significance and uh, yeah, do we need it and for what uh, do we need it and what happens if there's no osseointegration. 
Our implants are, as I mentioned, also fixated, so they are fixated in the cortical, so they are ready to work after they have been placed. There is no also integration necessary to make them work uh, and um, in the short time, I mean in the two, three days uh, between implant placement and loading, um, not even the most intricate surface <laughs> would create also integration. So this shows that also integration in dental implantology is not necessary. Uh, even I would I want to mention that if you would talk to a traumatologist, you know, some, some orthopedic surgeon and they are uh, these guys who are guys and girls who are fixing bones uh, with screws and plates and nails and so on, uh, if uh, if you ask them uh, how do you get osseo integration, they will ask you well, osseo what? Uh, no, this osseo integration is a yeah is a term which was introduced unfortunately into our. Uh, profession and now everybody aims for osseo integration and so this means like everybody runs after a, after a miracle and tries to explain how this miracle works. Mm, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it doesn't work the way we think and it doesn't uh, achieve the results that some uh, people, some companies are trying to tell us. The CONSES, uh, CONSES uh, document on immediate loading of jaw implants was uh, issued 2019. There, in this CONSENSUS document, it's described what is necessary to undergo um, immediate loading protocols and how they should be done. I'm sorry, this is still in the German language. Uh, another CONSENSUS document is the statement of the International Implant Foundation concerning probing around basal implants. Um, uh, basal and corticobasal implants, are, these two terms are used uh, alternatively. Um, so probing around basal implants is of course a mistake, it should never be done. Uh, it will harm the patient potentially and this consensus uh, document describes the problems which uh, are connected to, to probing. Um, in our clinic we are informing the patient that they should not allow anybody to, to start probing around their implants. It's a kind of habit, um, it came more from the periodontologists, I mean, they, they kind of introduced the probing <laughs> into our profession. Uh, probing around uh, basal and corticobasal implants is simply a mistake, it should not be done and the consensus describes why this is so. Next uh, is the consensus on 16 recognized and clinically proven methods and sub-methods for the insertion of these implants. It was issued 2018 for the first time. Uh, today um, the evidence level of the present uh, version of this consensus is S3, so that's the highest uh, level. Uh, it's an evidence-based, systematically developed consensus guideline. So these methods, the 16 methods and sub-methods which are described there, they really work. Um, we see this from, from a number of publications uh, which, uh, which describe uh, how the treatment was done for patients and what were the outcomes after many years. Uh, the consensus on the indication and treatment modalities for cortic basal implants, which was issue, issued 2019, is uh, also a very valuable document. It shows the differences between traditional implantology and cortic basal implantology, and uh, it describes uh, many clinical aspects of the usage of those implants and uh, describes when they should be used, when they should not be used, and how they should be used. So, all these um, Consensus documents together form um, form the laws actually which we which we use laws and regulations which we use in, uh, when we are treating our patients. These consensus documents are the base of any judgment about our work, and uh, they help because they are well structured. They help the young colleagues to learn the technology. To summarize this today. Corticobasal implantology largely replaces conventional dental implantology. Uh, traditional implantology still works according to the osteointegration methods, which we don't use anymore. Um, the, this brings the following advantages. First of all, immediate functional loading is possible. Bone buildups are completely avoided. Excellent results are also achieved in aesthetically difficult situations. This is not so easy to understand why this corticobasal implantology brings better aesthetics, but you will see this uh, when, when we show you this, when you learn. Uh, next is that perimplantitis doesn't occur. Perimplantitis is um, you know, very bad and 
mm, very harming condition, uh, which appears only around two-stage implants. It is big diameter, rough surface, uh, multi-piece implants, and we don't see this at all around our uh, implants. Um, this all leads to a situation where we do not have to select patients, so this patient selection which is done in traditional pathology is not necessary, is not done, with a few exceptions. Of course, there are some medical, um, medical situations which we cannot uh, treat or we, we better wait a year or so. Uh, corticobasal implantology does not only replace the two-stage implantology, but to some extent it will, uh, in my view, replace parts of dentistry in general. Um, as you may know, or I'm sure you understand, if you're, if you're open to see this, uh, the work on teeth after the age um, of the patient, let's say after 35, 40, 45, we do more re-dentistry than dentistry. So we are repairing the repair, we are replacing the crowns, we are replacing crowns which had been replaced. So this, uh, <laughs> this re-dentistry and re-re-dentistry uh, is more and more um, our job. And of course we have to admit that patients, although we try hard and although the patient invests uh, large amounts of money, uh, the patients are um, at the end of their life, most of them are without teeth, they are with some dentures, with some construction and only implantology uh, kind of can help them further. Um, implantology, traditional implantology is a very expensive uh, story. It's a, a lot of parts, expensive parts and many parts are included. Uh, also a lot of treatment time on the chair is wasted by traditional implantology. And all these problems are solved by, by corticobasal implantology. Uh, and that's why um, it, is it has become easy for many patients to forget about their teeth. They simply want to live without their teeth. They understand it's not necessary, there's an alternative. So the preservation of teeth is today only one option. We don't have to do this. We don't have to treat teeth in order to, to give to the patient fixed teeth in the mouth. Uh, more and more patients understand this, more and more treatment providers understand this. This has changed dentistry uh, totally, because dentistry was for, for decades and for centuries uh, concentrated on the preservation of teeth. How to keep these teeth in the mouth as long as possible, what to do with them if they are already damaged, how to, how to connect them to removable denture, to fixed uh, dentures and so on. So this is not um, necessary anymore today. Tooth preservation is no longer a necessity in order to eat with stable teeth until the end of life and in order to enjoy a normal life in a social environment. So this is the, the big offer to the population which we, uh, which we can give. Uh, Corticobasal implantology solves, um, I would say, all the problems of dentistry and it gives a real solution, whereas um, traditional dentistry gives only a, a solution usually over some time. Uh, in many countries it is possible to look at, uh, to participate in courses and in the curriculum, also in, in many languages. Uh, if you have uh, questions about this, if you are interested, please contact through email Mr. Fisher under the email address which I uh, display here. He has a WhatsApp number and um, uh, contact there and they will guide you to the people in your country and in your region uh, who will give you the necessary teaching for corticobasal implantology. Thank you very much for your attention.